Specifications from Mr. Allen. Um, he wanted us to design a launcher and launch platform that would be able to deliver the ignition source 80 to 100 feet to ignite an oil slick. Um, it must be able to safely and accurately launch the igniters from the deck of vessels out in the ocean, um, and the igniters have to land on the water survive the fall and launch, and then burn steadily for three to five minutes in place um, as the oil spill mitigation technique. All right, so when we're talking about this problem, there's a couple different parameters we had to work about. And the first one was the fact that our launcher was gonna be on a boat. So we needed to create a stand or a mount that would allow it to maintain like a s steady accuracy even though it's in wide open ocean and in the waves. So like our first solution for that was a gyroscope sort of stand where it could rotate in 360 degrees or any direction and still maintain the same uh, horizontal angle relative to the earth. And then because we're making a launcher system, uh, we discussed a couple different types. So we, we came to the conclusion that an air cannon would be the best solution. And that's mainly because it's going to be on the deck of a boat, and boats uh, that we're currently talking about already have compressed air, so that's an easily readable uh, source of ignition or source of power for the cannon. And then, because we're making an air cannon, the canisters we currently have are very obtuse and very funky looking, so we actually proposed redesigning these canisters so that they are more aerodynamic and can be launched from an air cannon 80 to 100 feet minimum. Um, so, how the solution meets the needs of the client, the, um, the pneumatic launcher is different than the uh, um, combustion launcher in the fact that it doesn't have explosions, which makes it much safer to be on boats where people don't really have an opportunity to get away from fires. Um, the pneumatic launchers will, should have sufficient power for launch, um, it, should, it will be able to launch 80 to 100 feet and we're going to implement rifling in the barrel of the cannon um, for greater accuracy and distance from the launch. And another aspect we're integrating into that was a little hook on the back of the cannon which would pull the flare cap off as the igniter was launched. So it would ignite as it was being launched. Um, the gyroscopic stand would provide stability through ocean swells and it wouldn't throw off launches and launch them straight into the ocean. And the redesigned canister would have greater aerodynamics, which would also increase the accuracy and distance. Um, and uh, the number one attribute that we considered when we were designing this project was the safety, of course, of the users, which was one of the primary reasons that we were assigned this task so that people wouldn't have to light these by hand and then drop them into oil slicks that were on top of the ocean because that's obviously not the safest thing to do. Um, but we also considered the size, efficiency, and the durability of the launcher. Um, we didn't want it to take up too much space, but we also wanted it to be able to complete the task. 
And we also considered cost, um, but we didn't cut any corners where safety was concerned. So, so one of the alternatives we considered was a catapult. Um, we considered this because it was very cost efficient, so it was relatively inexpensive. All you need is wood and a torsion system, a rope or something. And it has the ability to launch a relatively large projectile far, about 1,300 feet. Um, but the catapult has lots of disadvantages, one of which is it's inaccurate. Um, the catapult has a bucket type thing at the end of the throw arm, and once you put a projectile in the bucket, it has the ability to move around so you don't get a consistent accuracy, if that makes sense. Um, another disadvantage is that it's pretty big. The catapult would have a pretty long control, control, not control arm, uh, long, a swing arm, and that swing arm would have to hit a crossbar to launch the projectile. And once it does hit the projectile, it would create rocking in the boat, and that's not very safe either. And the biggest disadvantage for the catapult is it's temperature sensitive. Um, I know that we need to be able to use it in all kinds of climates, um, from Arctic to tropical. And the catapult isn't able to do that. When it's cold out, the torsion system gets brittle, so it has a, it has a potential to snap. And when it's warm out, the torsion system gets elastic, so you don't get the necessary tension to send it 80 to 100 feet. So we decided this was not the best option. <laughs> All right, and our second alternative was crossbow technology, and these have been seen as far back as 2000 BC, so it's kind of a tried and true method of launching projectiles. And some advantages of this are it has a high degree of accuracy. It can be calibrated to shoot consistently to hit the same mark repeatedly. And then also, it also it's relatively simple. It was developed a long time ago, and it's like I said, it's very consistent. But some disadvantages are that over time, the string of the crossbow could become worn and possibly snap. That's definitely not good when you're shooting an ignited barrel or projectile. Then also, um, limbs have been known to snap on crossbows. They're made of fiberglass. And when fiberglass snaps, it like fragments into little barbs, kind of. So these would go flying everywhere, and they could uh, lodge themselves in any exposed skin and uh, just not be good. <laughs> and uh, also the average draw weight on a normal size crossbow is 175 pounds. So this would have to be scaled up considerably to shoot a larger projectile, and you would have to design a crank system to be able to draw back the weight. And so for all these reasons, uh, we decided that this wouldn't be the optimal solution. All right, so some upcoming dates. Today, the project proposal, um, on October 15th, we're having the system design due in class. Um, November 5th, the subsystem analysis and subsystem prototypes will all be due. Um, on November 19th, the build and test procedure will be completed. On December 1st, the project brochure, like pretty much the final project is due. And then on December 8th, the final report and prototype are due with an oral presentation. All right, and uh, this is our Gantt chart. As you can see, a lot, of these, uh, a lot of these assignments and deliverables will take a considerable amount of time to complete. All the, in all blue is the research that we'll be doing. So obviously we have a lot of research, a lot of information to get while we're going through des the design process. And then in orange are all the deliver deliverables. As you can see, we'll be working for some close to three weeks on some of them. So it's, it's gonna take some time. So when discussing the budget for this project, we broke the total into labor and materials, and it's going to cost more as far as labor than it will materials. 
even though there's a lot of materials and that's mainly because we're going to need to hire a welder and someone to do the assembly and overall that shouldn't take a whole lot of time because our whole design is, is fairly simple and that's part of why it's so safe um, but in the end we are going to spend about six hundred and eleven dollars on materials for uh, different tubing that's rated for certain pressures that can handle a cannon like scenario as well as like we're going to be breaking down the labor into actual assembly and welding um, which we can't weld so that isn't something we can really cut corners on um, and then I think that's about it for the budget uh, so um, here's just the materials all consolidated onto one slide. Um, you can see the pie chart of costs for the materials. Um, the labor costs, it's only two things on there. Um, and then something I wanted to bring up to you, Al, is under our costs, we did not bring up anything as far as the canister, but that was mainly because we already have canisters that are being made and you're using those right now in like your field. So you're already paying for those now, and we're simply coming up with a redesign of it. So in the long run, our design can change it, but it really shouldn't change the overall cost of the napalm canisters at all. Uh, and, then and then overall, the total cost should be about $1,611 per unit. That's your last slide, isn't it? Mm -hmm. oh, no. One more, we got so, our conclusion coming So, up. in conclusion, after considering the various design alternatives and then the actual design that we're going with, we've decided that a pneumatic air cannon would really be able to do the job the best and most safely while meeting the design parameters. And then, so, the air cannon basically offers cost effectiveness while maximizing safety, durability, and efficiency. Um, in comparison to the other alternatives. It also offers a wide range of adjustability. And like they said, it can be rotated 360 degrees. The angle of sh the shot can be measured or changed. And uh, so our de final design, along with the prototype, will be presented on December the 8th. So that's it. Thank you. All right, good. So. Do you have any other information you wanted to present at this time, or would you like me to give you a little bit of feedback right now? Feedback would be awesome. Okay, well, first of all, I, I like the presentation, and I'm really glad that you had these slides prepared for me. Uh, I think that helps a lot to have some of the uh, text as well as some of your images, so that, that was well done. Um, I think when you're giving a presentation like this, it, it might be good, by the way, uh, in an actual client situation, to let them know which slide you're on. I found I had to kind of jump around and figure out which slide you were referring to. The um, fact that you came back, kept everything very brief is good. I don't know what your plan was, whether you wanted to complete the presentation in 10 minutes or whether you had a full 20 minutes allowing for questions and answers? It was a 10-minute presentation allowing for questions and answers. Okay, good. Well, then that was well done as well. Um, let me ask you about the method of ignition. You know, I think you stated that you would try to ignite as the projectile was launched. What, what is the method of ignition? Um, so, in the redesigned canisters that we were thinking about using, the flare would actually be um, embedded in the middle of the canister, and the cap of the flare would be sticking out of the back. And so when you loaded it into the air cannon, you could hook the cap of the flare onto the back of the cannon, and when the projectile is launched, everything but the cap would be launched, which would mean that it would ignite the flare upon launch. So, so the ignition of the flare, would, would that be done mechanically or electrically? 
Okay. Yeah, it would, be, it would be done mechanically because all of the forced air that would be pushing the um, projectile out of the barrel would pull the cap off of the flare also. Okay, but by pulling the cap off the flare, uh, of course that doesn't ignite the flare. What would be the mechanism that you have in mind to actually cause the friction of the, what would normally be the cap of being struck against the end of the flare? Um, it, it would be a mechanical <laughs> we, we, we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> you, you want to give some more thoughts to that? Or? Yeah. No. Because the, uh, you know, if you've ever, uh, I'm sure you guys have done this, but when you strike that cap on a flare, uh, sometimes it takes two, three, or four attempts to get the right amount of pressure to get the uh, you know, friction going and therefore a spark that ignites a flare. And uh, I was wondering how you were going to initiate the actual striking of the flare. Um, yeah, we'll think about that and